I was challenged. I got the comment when I showed a, I think it was either the shorts that I did with this palette or it was the little close up, whatever, filming of the pants in here. But I was challenged to do four looks with this palette and this is what you're going to see today. I prepared four tutorials for you, four different looks. If you follow me on Instagram, you already have seen these looks. If not, then this is going to be a surprise. The only spoiler I can then give you now is that this, what you see here, is look number four. So in case you didn't know, Natasha Denona Midi Xenon is the long-awaited, I don't know, like bigger version, let's just say that, of the Mini Xenon, which was the five pen version. I never owned the Mini Xenon, that was never appealing to me. And to be honest, when I bought this palette, the only thought that I had was like, oh, that's a nice dark companion palette when I'm missing a black. And when I ordered it, I was like, that's so dumb. Like, that's the dumbest reason to buy a palette. But I wanted to try this anyways because I like Natasha Denona palette. And the only Bad palettes, in my opinion, are the pastel palette, and actually nobody's talking about the pastel palette anymore, and the Yucca. I haven't decluttered it yet, but um, before I decide whether or whether to declutter it, I just want to dive more into and maybe create also a video like that using Yucca. Let me know down below. So before we head into the tutorial, just one little shameless ad here. If you want to buy this or any other Natasha Denona product, you can always use my code Ella Kingley to save 15%. The code and the link is also in the info box down below. But now let's focus on this monochromatic gray and black beauty and head over to tutorial number one. Okay, so for the first look, I'm starting with the shade Night Sky. And I do take this on a very, very tiny, precise brush. And what I do is I look a bit down and then I basically map out my eye with this. Or the crease, better said. I then take another very small and precise brush and I go into the shade Snurt. And I use this to diffuse this line that I just created. This process definitely needs some tap back and blending and patience. So just trust the process when you do this. And I take a classic pencil brush and I tap into the shade Furry. No, it's Flurry, like Mac Flurry. <laughs> and I use this on the new edge that I just created to buff out even more. So if you blend it away a bit too much, you can always go back in with the darkest shade, which in this case was Night Sky, and just add it back to, to this lower line of your crease. You know what I mean? And if it didn't work clean, you can always remove excess um, blending underneath that line, so you have a very clean cut with a, some kind of makeup remover and a cotton swab. Yeah, the little sticks with a cotton. I think it's cotton swab. I now go into the shade Snowbow, which, well, on the promo pictures was much pinker than it actually is in real life, but it still is a pretty color. And I do apply this now all over the lid. I take this up to that line and I basically fill out all of this negative space that we created. So for the lower lash line, I'm now tapping back into night sky, but with one of those very flat, uh, thin brushes. And I do apply this directly into the lower lash line, like very, very close to the waterline. And then I take the brush like kind of um, parallel to this corner and I flick it outwards just a bit. They should not connect, but if they do, it's not a problem, but I try to keep the space empty. And I do the same thing with the inner corner. I extend that line a bit and flick it a tiny bit inwards. And what I do now is basically the same as on the uh, upper lid. I go into Snurt. I even use the same brushes because the size is perfect for this type of work. And I start to blend out this line. Just be a bit careful on this outer part because you don't want to have too much going on there. You could also now blend down even further with the shade Flurry, but I think that's enough for now. I'm now tapping into the shade Rhyme or Ream. I don't know what's the correct pronunciation and I'm too lazy to Google now. And I apply this in my inner corner and I slightly drag it onto the lid too. 
I basically just want to extend the lid and this time without taking it to the crease or lower lash line. Just want to extend it a bit. And I actually do the same thing over here. I take that shade and I fill out this gap. And then I, I do a flick. I now go back into the snow bow shade and I use this also as brow bone highlight to just tie the shades together here. And this is now the finished first look. I have to admit this is way way out of my comfort zone. Like this is something like the shape with this negative space is something that I have never done before and I don't know how it feels so let me know down below if you like this type. But now let's head over to look number two. Okay, so for the second look, I'm starting right away with the shade uh, Spoosh. And I do take this on a very round uh, but dense brush because this is a cream to powder shade. And if you remember with a lot of reviews that I did for Natasha Denona, cream to powder was always my enemy, but in the Xenon, they do work. I like them in here. And what I do is with this, I apply this very sloppy on the outer and inner third. You can probably already sense it because this is going to be a classic halo eye. I'm now taking again a more dense brush, but this time like more crease blending shaped. I, I, I'm struggling with words today. And I'm going again into spoosh, but just very lightly because I don't want to have too much of a product because I use this brush now to drag the color through my crease. It doesn't have to be super precise because we're going in with something else anyways, but I just like to close the gap. You could also do a full on halo. That means it goes above the crease towards the brow, but today I want to do a like more closed halo eye. I'm now going into the shade Blizzard with a like regular crease brush. And I do apply this along the edges. This is just here to smooth it out and to make the blend more seamless. I also took some more of the spoosh shade on the first brush and reapply some of the black because when you blend out, um, some of the color gets just dusted over and I want to have a very intense inner and outer black here. Just keep on going because sometimes it's all about building and blending. So I applied some glitter glue in the center of the lid where no color is yet and now I'm going into the shade Super Ionic. And I tap this directly in the center. I basically fill out this complete empty space and don't worry about harsh edges, we are tackling them just in a minute. So on that second more dense of blending brush, I took some of Spoosh again and now I just flick it starting from the dark side inwards on top of where the Super Ionic shade is. So I'm lining down my upper and lower waterline with the Pat McGrath Permagel one in black. I hate lining the upper waterline, I'm always like, Ugh. like I have a stroke or something. Next up, I pick up some of the spoosh shade again on one of those shadow brushes and I apply this on the lower lash line, on the outer third and on the inner third. Okay, I have to actually connect these two pieces because on the left eye, I went in a bit too far. So now let's just connect them and draw the halo on top. That works too. On a smaller brush, I also tapped into Blizzard again. And just like on the upper eye, I go with this over the edges for a more seamless blend. You could totally leave it like that. You do not have to do the halo, but I like the look of the halo on the upper and lower lid. So with the smallest packing brush that I own, I pick up some of that super ionic shade look straight forward in the mirror and then I apply this in the same area. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to mimic this like when you close the eyes you have like one halo going on. And since I have done this without any glitter glue there is a ton of glitter fallout. But you all know the drill already. The trusty spoolie will flick it all off. I now go into the shade Stellar and I use this as inner corner highlight. Usually you don't do inner corner highlight with halo eyes, but I just can't live without. 
And this is now the finished look number two. I also added some of the, I think it's called rhyme, sorry if I'm just pronouncing it wrong all the time, up here as my brow bone highlight because I feel like this is a very perfect brow bone highlight I could use every single day. But now let's head over to look number three. <laughs> okay, for look number three, I'm starting with the shade Ebb. And I do take this on one of those flat brushes and I start by pressing this here into the lashes. I basically just hold the brush underneath and then I blink into the brush. That's for me the easiest way to do this. I should do this more often because I love the subtle effect that this gives. Okay, so when I'm done, I now just take a small line outside and then flick it in. Just a bit like a winged liner style but it doesn't matter if this is really sharp or not because I'm gonna clean up afterwards so it gets sharp. And what I wanna have is I mainly wanna focus on this area. So flick it out as much as you like and then just do a little bit of a like very sharp angle and go back towards the center of your eye. I'm now taking a small pencil brush and I tap into the shade Snurt. And I now just apply this here on this top and blend this out and along the lash line, basically. What I do on this outside part, I do build up that snurt shade a bit and let it like flick inwards so that I have a gradient from my skin color towards the snurt shade. I'm now going into the shade Contrario and I apply this all over the lid. I also apply it here on top and I also blend this slightly up towards the brow. I'm honest with you, if you are a lover of matte only eye looks, this could be a vibe, but um, I'm not. <laughs> I need something sparkly now. And I think the best shade to do the effect that I'm kind of imagining now is a Stellar. I take the same brush as I used Contrary with, this time without any glitter glue. And I basically start to swipe this here on the lid. You can also do it in the crease. It doesn't really matter. Basically, you want to dust a light layer of the shimmer on top of everything. Okay, I'm going back into Ep now with the same brush I used in the beginning. And I now apply this here on the lower lash line and connect it with the upper wing that I created. And I'll also take this all the way along with whatever is left. I also take the same brush I use Snurt again and tap it once more into Snurt. And I use this now here to blend the app shade out. I don't blend so much here on this outer part because I want to have a quite sharp line. But I'll also flick a bit up here so that the gradient is a bit better. I'm now going into the shade Snowbow and I use this as inner corner highlight. And here we have now the finished look number three. I added also, where is it, some of the Calabasas liner, BFF liner from Colourpop. And to make this look even more sparkly and shiny, I also added some of the Pat McGrath and Alien Jellic Gloss, which is just a, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, a shifty chrome glitter gloss because I feel like this matches the vibe. But now let's head over to the last look of this video. Okay, for the last look in this video, I'm tapping at first into the shade Flurry. And I take this on a very, very fluffy brush because this is my transition shade. And I apply this above the crease, nearly up to the brows. This just helps blending. I now go into the shade Snurt. This shade kind of developed as an unsung hero in this palette because for whatever reason, I think there is no look that I've done now with this palette where I didn't use this shade. I mean, could also be because it's the only mid-tone gray, but it's it's just some good gray. On a bit of a small brush, I now take the shade Spoosh, and I apply this on the outer V area, and of course, flick it also into the crease. I tap back into Flurry, and I just go over the edges here a bit. I wanna have it real, real seamless. 
Okay, I applied now glitter glue all over my lid and now I'm going into the shade uh, Skift. I haven't used that yet, to be honest. And I think I haven't used this in general since I have this palette. And Skift is going in the center. Or you know what? Not in the center. I'm starting in the inner corner or in a part of the lid. And I'm taking this until I reach the center where I just started. This has a surprising transparent base, so I was actually not expecting this. Wow. Why haven't I used this shade before? This reminds me a lot of Space Cowboy from uh, Urban Decay, but in a more amped up version, I guess. The shade just looks so different in the pan. I mean, it looks more like a bronzy color. I wasn't aware that this is more transparent and I love this. So I'm now tapping into the shade Cygnus, which is the dark black metal shade or glitter or shimmer, whatever. And I apply this here on the outside on top of the dark outer V and I slightly tap this over the edge of Skift. So I took more of Skift and I just go over this edge once more to have a seamless blend. I'm now adding the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk um, liner, Col Kajal, whatever, on my waterline because I want to see how this with a little touch of warm red just is appearing. I wanted to do that the whole time, but I always forgot. I'm now going into the shade Night Sky and I press and swipe this along the lash line. And I also connect it with this outer part here. I'm now going into Snort again and I use this to blend that out. You don't have to do this, but I do it. I'm tapping also into Flurry once more, and I basically apply this here underneath and slightly on top to give it a, like, I don't know, like filtered look, if that makes sense. It just takes away the harshness and just softens everything. I'm now tapping into the shade Nev and use this as inner corner highlight. I also, as always, drag it on the lower lash line and this time into the crease too. And all the glitter fallout I'm swiping off with a spoolie. And this is now the final look number four for this video. I really need to rethink my ranking of Natasha Denona palettes because I'm honest with you, the Xenon kind of is getting top one or maybe two. I understand the critique about this palette, about being very redundant in some of the shades, way too gray, way too black, but I wanna just ask you the question, what the fuck did you expect? <laughs> like the mini, the five pan xenon, black and silver. Was it white or gray? I don't know, I, I don't have that. So what did you expect from a midi xenon? Of course, it's black, it's gray, it's silver. We have with Skift one of those beautiful, I mean, you see it here on the lid, like transparent wet shades. Snowbow, yes, this has a pink tint. I wish it would be more pink or purple, but it isn't. You have beautiful snow shades, ice shades, grays, black. The only thing or the only flaw that I see is the fact that you have App, Spoosh and Night Sky, which are different enough in the pan in my opinion, but they do kind of translate, at least on me, very similar with this blackish blue. I wish instead of Spoosh or Night Sky to have another mid-tone shade, because as I just said with the last look, the only mid-tone blending shade you actually have is Snurt. I absolutely enjoyed doing four different looks with this and I just want to say once more what do you expect from a palette like this and if you just look back to the history of Natasha Denona palettes a lot of people are criticizing that you will end up with the same looking looks all the time. What happened with bronze? Like Natasha Denona bronze same looks every time they all look warm bronzed. Retro, they all look purple. These are monochromatic palettes. And I think criticizing the fact that she is doing monochromatic color stories in a palette and then complaining about the fact that the color story is monochromatic, I don't get that critique. Again, the only critique that I have is I'm missing one more mid-tone blending shade to have just 
an option and not have to use Snurk all the time. Do you want me to do these more often, like maybe three or with bigger palettes, like when, when we are talking like 30 pan palettes, even five looks in one video? Let me know what palette you would like to see next because I really enjoyed that video. So don't forget to subscribe, check out the info box because I just said it also in the intro. If you wanna buy this or any other Natasha Denona palette, product, lipstick, whatever, you can always use my code Ella Kinkley to just save 15%, which is affiliated, aff affili affiliated. That means I get a small commission when you use either my code or my link to buy stuff. So thank you so much for being here. Let me know also down below what was your favorite look and I hope I can see you in the next video.